three in all it captures it develops the film mm. then it projects the film on the white screen so that you see what has been captured mm. but the the technology the invention was not exposed or the formula of the invention was not exposed to the world mm -hmm. so when they died nobody could do or when they stopped the in uh, the film work they did it for two years and the rest of the universe picked it up from there mm. so one could invent uh, to could develop the camera separately the projector separately mm. and the laboratory to develop the film from positive to negative mm. separately but what the Lomer brothers did in France mm. was to develop a gadget who could do the three in one. Mm. And in uh, 48, the colonial masters set up the uh, Good Coast Film Unit. Mm. Between 48 to 47, uh, 1947, that was what was running. Mm. From 1940, uh, for 1948 uh, to 1957, the Independence Day, mm. that was the end of the Gold Coast era. Mm. From 58 upward, Dr. Sajifu also initiated the establishment of the Ghana Film Industry Corporation, mm. which was inaugurated in 1964. Out of it, movies like I Told You So and all the other huge, huge movies then were produced. And Within the era after Kwame Nkrumah's overthrown, a, a dispensation of coup d'etat was cast into the country. So almost every two years or three years, there will be overthrown government. And you know, cinema has, is a night business. Okay. So with the curfews and with all the that. With the curfews, it started depreciating mm. the, the strength of the Ghana film industry. Mm. And again, by, uh, by the record, Ghana is the first African country to venture into the film industry. South of the Sahara or the whole of Africa? The whole of Africa. Not even apartheid South Africa came no, before No, Ghana us. is the first country to have film industry. And not that even the Nigerians that are so well, They came to learn from now. Ghana in, 90, in the 90s. It is on record. They were in Ghana to learn filmmaking in the 90s. But the question is, as the history proceeded, Okay. Throughout from 66, yes, sir. after the coup d'etat, coming down to the 80s, there was nothing by the state. The state was not producing. Mm -hmm. So we had mm -hmm. Mr. Kwanza producing... Owner, owner of TV Africa. Yes. Uh, producing uh, Love Brew, Brew in African Ports, the first independent film in Ghana. Okay. And then uh, Ken Ampao produced the road to Kukrantumi. Kukrantumi yeah, in the Kukrantumi. eastern region. Yes. And that movie introduced uh, Dividonto okay. for the first time in the film business. Ah, okay. That was okay. the movie that introduced and Dividonto. And the Agro, man. Agro yes. was so trying. <laughs> so from that time, we were shooting on Soliloid. The Republic of Ghana was the only filmmaker in the country. In, on the continent, you no, mean? No, in the country, like Ghana. Okay. But by then, other countries are now doing movies. After we being the uh, within the colonial masters and stuff. By the 80s, there were other countries involved in the film business. But in mm. Ghana, it was only the country as a republic, Ghana Film Industry Corporation, that has the mandate to produce and edit. Because if you want to edit your film you have to develop the negative the positive to negative the film the soliloid film and you have to go and do it in abroad hey. and you need a uh, foreign exchange hmm. the change change currency to go and do that work and there was nothing like forest bureau today so you will need the state, the state to do the foreign exchange hmm. for hmm. you to go hmm. and do that hmm. no one could do the hmm. could do it Mm. So, <clears throat> the passionate Ghanaians in the 80s, we had a generation that popped in mm. from one uh, uh, William Akufo. Okay. I use the name one William because a lot of people today don't know him. Mm. Uh, if you have heard the school, Gallywood, the CEO of Gallywood. I see. He is the first man to produce, to introduce 
the video technology filmmaking that today is all over the country. That is using the VHS video camera that we used to take adoraries and parties and funerals. Wow. In the absence of or in the in his inability to go for cellular, which was billion, I mean million business, pick the camera up about telling the story, wow. capturing the story, pick his, the camera, wow. and started rolling. Wow. And using deck to deck editing. We call it linear editing. Hmm. It was the picture quality you can talk about it. Very poor. You can just you can talk about mm. it. But it was the first time after many years telling the Ghanaian story by a Ghanaian. Can I ask you a question? How many angles were they able to capture at that time? Would it be three different angles, three dimensional, or it would be one camera on one actor for five minutes? Not one camera for five minutes at a time. Okay. They were they did they did they did the film work. Wow. But when we tell it comes to the camera, with film, it is one camera business. It's not multi-camera. Hmm. Television is multi-camera. Hmm. But film is one camera. So you don't do film and expect to hold plenty of cameras. It's the generation have developed there are some uh, sequences that when you are shooting today, you then need uh, multiple cameras because you may not be able to reverse the sequence mm. like the action sequence and all there are sequence some sequence you need multiple cameras but the dialogue scene like this mm. one camera is is what you need because if i'm doing a, a shot and i need ots mm. whilst we are talking and i fix two cameras and one camera is at my back one camera is at your back mm. facing me and mine facing you and we are talking my camera will see your camera mm. So you just do use a boom mic and one camera. One camera. So when I we finish the conversation, we have to start the conversation again. So you have you to take multiple takes. So that's why we have the what we call take one. Then take it two. makes it quite Trends. laborious. No, filmmaking is a very tedious job. You watch what has been edited, not what was done actually. Mm. Because you, you let's say you spend mm. six months or three months to shoot a movie mm. and you watch it in one hour 30 minutes wow so you can imagine what has gone into the three months business or two weeks business and you are watching it in an hour so the history again came to the point that we have to do movies and a new generation young like me at that time energetic like me at the time mm. in the 80s 84 85 86 bob smith jr Diabolo Man. Mm -hmm. That was when they started those movies. They did uh, Diabolo, mm -hmm. uh, Ayalolo, Zinabu. Ah, where, where was Santo? Santo is in the seven, uh, 90s, 97, So they came even later. No, Santo, Santo, came. Santo in, in for fame, Santo was brought in later, crap. later, 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 later. For fame, no. He was a concert man doing his concert through the villages. Mm. And his concert were dubbed on the audio tape, and people were listening, and it was mm. hilarious. Mm. So filmmakers mm. saw it all. I mean, we could make money with this guy. Mm. Brought him in front of the camera, and start capturing him. Wow. And he really broke through from mm. there. So and the woman, sorry for cutting. The woman who used to say, "I don't feel who." Oh, she is late. Yeah, I know she is Alabastam. late. Alabastam. At what I point did she too. come? Uh, during oh, Covers, I told too. you so. Okay. They are the, the, the I first yes. generation. I see. All of us time, they are the first generation. I see. Yeah, they are Kwame Nkrumah's brigadiers. Those that wow. they used to set up the film industry. Wow. So, in the, in the 90s, uh, in the 80s, a new generation, I call them the second generation. The first generation were those that Kwame Nkrumah groomed mm. or sent them abroad to go and learn and come and do the Ghana film industry. Yeah. Then the second generation at the 80s, those who pick up with the video technology. Mm. And at the time, because the government was shooting on solar and they are professionally trained, mm. academic, academically trained, and all these technical things are invested in them. Yeah. They saw the new generation as like, excuse me, this is not film. Film is not video. The distinction is clear. But they did not see the future of video. That was where the program in Ghana film industry started. 
So they did not embrace the video filmmakers. Mm. And they, they, uh, they uh, antagonized them. Mm. So there was a friction between the two sectors. The video filmmakers and the elite filmmakers. They never married for over 20 years after then. The contention was high. Now we call it the nafty people in the film industry. So that was the second generation. And they picked it up. And it went well. At the exhibition of uh, Alaji Sidi Kubaru's movie, Ayalolo, it hit the Ghana uh, uh, theater. And the patronage was boom. And then... This was in 1988. 1988. 88. Sidi Kubaru. He's that, among the second generation filmmakers in this country. Before music. I see. Before music. So Nadia Bari's father was one of the pioneers mm. for Ghana film industry today. I see. Before he got into music. People don't know that part of him. He did about two, three movies at the time. He was the first to premiere video film at the cinema mm. he rented they wouldn't permit it so he booked the theater that okay well, I'm uh, uh, educate me and educate our viewers when you say video film would it be pushing in a vhs cassette then you would watch on a big screen or you would act drama in front of an audience at the national theater oh there's a difference between the acting format, when it comes to acting, we have stage acting and screen acting. Mm -hmm. The stage acting is where you act before the live audience. Theater. Theater acting. So, is it, is theater's history is different from filmatography. Or cinematography. Theater is stage, performing arts. Okay. Theater is performing art, where you perform before live audience. Film is a recorded uh, medium. You record it, edit it, and exhibit it to the audience. So why would you say it was the first to do video showing? Is it different from the, the usual? The, the format by which you record that motion picture is, is film because the medium you, were, we rec you record on it is a solid film. Okay. So that's why it is called film. Mm. But the, uh, the, when it, it comes to video, mm. the medium we're recording on was video format mm. video cassette mm. with a video camera mm. but because film has become the term for the for motion picture mm. so you doing motion picture with video mm. so the word film mm. simplifies or uh, means motion picture mm. so we call video film or cinema film so when you use the word cinema film, it means it was shot on a celluloid uh, camera. Okay. Cinema camera. Mm. So the cinema film the and the video is quite film. Clear. So the video technology and the cinema technology. Because the cinema projector, mm. it is not pure mongo, it's, it's celluloid. So you would manually operate it? No, I have a motor electronically, but it is the celluloid rail. With the solar tapes film in it and it projects to the screen when you look at the history you know the history of cinematography goes hand in hand with ghana's history of electrification so those times when villages didn't have electricity they were completely cut off and they didn't know what films were at the time no from 1948 ghana was uh, a good post was watching film in the villages most especially because you can't rule the people the uh, the people in the in this urban are already subjected by education to the colonial masters mm. the mm. villagers were naive of the colonial masters wow. so fame was sent to them mm. so we have the uh, information service department that was the unit for created by the colonial masters which exists up to now as they exist up to this now, time information service department. yeah yeah but then what it does is to push government communication to the district level. So they send the film to the villages. And the film is, we have the film van or wow. the uh, cine van. Different from OB van and OB van. OB van is for broadcasting. Okay. 
outdoor broadcasting van. Okay. Outdoor broadcasting, broadcasting van. van. So OB van. Okay. It is for television. Okay. Which television came in the 1950s? That one is a different story. Different story. So film has always been used as a tool for brainwashing, mm -hmm. for education, mm -hmm. for informing, mm -hmm. for 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 tuning of people's mindsets mm -hmm. or controlling mm -hmm. cultural mm -hmm. elements. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which, if we lose the sense of fame, the importance of fame, mm -hmm. we lose our identity as a, as a country. Mm -hmm. So the film industry was working till 1996, when then government sold the Ghana film industry out on diverse teacher, how they call it by economics. To the Malaysians. To the Malaysians for 15 years. Owners of TV3 later. Current owners of TV3. That was when it was turned to TV3. Mm. Then... That building. That building what was a it? state. It's Ghana Film Industry Corporation. Kwame Nkrumah built Ghana Film Industry Corporation to produce films and attached to the Ghana Film Industry is Ghana Broadcasting Corporation with the GTV, Ghana Television, to project the film shot by the film industry. That is how come... I was on... That's why they are on the same uh, compound no, no. with a small door in between them mm. so they shoot the film they carry it to the tv station and they broadcast so that is how tv3 is that close to gtv, GTV not because they had the opportunity to buy the same land wow it is fame the ghana film industry was sold to the malaysians who create who, who are not filmmakers but television broadcasters mm. and came with their television station called tv3 wow and after 2013 their contract the the contract expired then a Ghanaian politician bought it. Mm. So as we are talking today, the film industry is really pissed. Ghana film industry from Borga to Accra, we are pissed that that facility should be given back to us. That is the center of our heritage as film, as culture. That is where we make film to maintain our culture. We are complaining about all this profusion of foreign content on our TV stations and Mexico, India, whatever. Why? Because we don't have our central point of producing content or managing same content. Educate me, uh, Richie. I was in Disney World in Los Angeles and it's like a laboratory for movie production. Are you telling me that the small piece of land at Adisawe was meant to be a Disney World? As, as at 1957, 58, 59 to 19, Kwame Kuma was taken off, the whole country was a small country. That was our Disney World. That was our center of administration for film. Ghana was about 9, 000, 9 million to 10 million. That was all the, the biggest Africa had. When you go to TV3, we have two studios, Studio A and Studio, studio B. B. That was the first film studio in the whole African continent. The first film, vid, uh, film uh, sound stage, sound stage film studio in the whole African continent. So we were that huge in the 60s which politician bought the place in 2013 from the malaysians it was in the then government the ruling government then okay. and the politician from the then ruling government mention the person's name no i may not have the guards to mention to be quite i may not have the guards to mention to to be quite but if i mention that i'm ready to uh, handle the case i'm not ready quite to handle the case but if you have to tip off to to be quite you, 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 you are the journalist that can handle the rest ah <laughs> but then you can yeah. tell us why yes uh, if i'm ready for the battle then okay. i will do that but okay. i don't think i'm ready for the and battle. let me ask you specific questions so at what time did this idea of English glamour Gollywood movies come and others that were produced in Kumasi they were christened Kumawood and when did Venus Miracle Films, films and others when did they come into the system? When the country as a republic 
couldn't produce film again, they gag the whole country and deny us of continuity or preservation of our culture. So individual Ghanaians, passionate Ghanaians like myself, then our forefathers we came to meet, realized, no, we, we could tell our own stories. With our small money in our pocket, some of them have come from US and at the time, they are bogus. With the small money they had, and they've been around this thing, this uh, whatever, whatever, the studio, the scene, productions going on, they've observed, we could do this. So they came and they, they started recruiting some people from the, the government outfit to direct their movies. They called the co government outfit, the Ghana Film Industry Corporation was yeah. not accepting the video technology. Yeah. At the time, they banned their people from, direct, for, from working for the, in, uh, the independent filmmakers. So the independent filmmakers were forced to direct their own films. So then the culture in Ghana that you see today, producer director emerged because the producer was recruiting the directors from the G, uh, G, uh, GFIC and they have been bound to come and work with us. So you've got to direct your own film if you insist to film. And that's why it started. Then associations came on board, like Film Producers Association. Uh, Ghana Test Girl started in the 80s, 88. Then Film Producers Association of Ghana to came up. There was uh, uh, the, the elites had their own called Ghana Academy of Film and Television Arts. They also put themselves together. So you could see that since we couldn't merge, the fragmentation started at the time between government workers and the private workers. But the government workers who were doing film were seeing the private workers as illiterate. Mm -hmm. So instead of them as the states creating the platform to enhance the illiterate, as they call them, to develop the skill because they have the money and they have the passion mm. to develop and catch up with the integrity of the film business they dejected them and banned their workers from working with them so they have to do it whatever means by their own way of understanding what film is by their intuition by their own intuition so that was how come we had the village settings so poor get quality of any, cam uh, anyone uh, who's camera interested work. that comes in nothing stops him from doing his film if you mobilize two three people say you have a guild or a production he carries the camera on the street whatever he recalls it is his own business no regulation no law no film law no film policy and everybody started shooting okay then come at this production companies forming so we had all this, we have HM films, Haki films, uh, Alessi Boots, uh, uh, one of the biggest uh, distributors Ghana has ever had, who has stopped the business and distribution is a challenge now in Ghana. We had Silver Line, a whole lot conglomerate of them. Then in the, that was the 90s, from the 80s uh, to the 90s, the 90s to the, to the 2000s. From the 2000 coming, mm -hmm. a new generation also popped up. Mm. Mm. And that time, the video has developed to digital camera. Mm. So now from the raw video format to a digital camera format. And then, the new me uh, me that's where the Venus films pop in, in the 2003, 2004. And we saw Abdul Salam making wave and that man I salute him you see irrespective of our structures in the country irrespective of law and policies some people laid their life and invested their their money to do what they can do to maintain what we call Ghana film industry mm. without the help of the states Mm. So I always say that those who always say, look at them and use the word, what are they doing, what they are doing is rubbish, it's garbage, is it? You could not have done it. The Republic of Ghana could not have done anything. These people spent their own money to do film, to mm. keep that video film alive, mm. so that we will have our 
own identity. Other than that, we will be the, the foreign content will be hundred percent in this country. Mm. So they have done well to maintain our culture in whatever way they have been able to capture. Without them, we wouldn't have Jackie Apia, Nadia Bwari, Van Vika, Majid Michel, Ajako, Lewen, uh, Emilia Brobe, call any name you know in this country, they were produced by these people, okay. not by the elites. Um, can you hold your peace for a moment? We are joined on the line by Mr. Benjilo. Benjilo, welcome to the show. Hello. Hello, Benjilo. Okay, sorry the line dropped. Um, a colleague of yours or a junior of yours, I don't know how to call him. He's a colleague. Uh, a colleague. Benjilo. Yes, a, a, a movie producer. He would have also brought to bear his experience. So, um, you were talking about the integrity of the film industry. Yes. Were these movie award schemes, were they helpful? Or they just came and then hyped people that who didn't have the skills and commitment to push the industry to the next level. Movie award scheme. Okay, we, ha we, we have Benjilo, right? Hi, Benjilo. Hi. Hey, how are you, Benjilo? Welcome to the show. Thank you, sir. I'm good. And you? I'm superb. We are in the studios <laughs> with. Mr. Richard Iawati, National President, Film Directors Guild of Ghana, your colleague. Oh, okay. Um, we are doing a diagnosis of the Ghana film industry, and we are asking, where have we gone wrong for telenovelas and Mexican movies and Indian movies to flood the market? Hello? I look, did you get my question? Come, come again, sir. Come again. We are doing a diagnosis of where we've gone wrong in terms of our film industry in the Republic of Ghana to give way uh, for alien content, Mexican, okay. Brazilian, Italian to flood the markets. Uh, well, now with the cap of our uh, movie industry here now, we cannot blame anyone, but rather blame ourselves. Um, we, the producers, we have uh, we have a role to play. Uh, but then, hello? Yeah, we can hear you loud and clear. Okay, we, the producers, we have a role to play, which we feel to play, and the marketers too, and some of our leaders. These are the cause of the challenges we are facing today. So, um, Benjilo, the value chain is production, marketing, and distribution. And there is a big noise at where, where you are. I can't really hear you. So, if, if uh, uh, raise up your voice, your voice a bit for me. The value chain, I'm saying, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Is production, distribution, mm -hmm. and marketing. Okay. Where do we have the biggest problem? Because now you don't buy movies on DVDs any longer. There is piracy. Yeah, it's past and gone. Okay, so where, where lies the problem? Where, where do we f have the greatest challenge, so to speak? Okay, the problem we have now, uh, our leaders cause it. You see, the film industry is a, it's a, it's an institution that updates itself. As we were growing into filmmakers, we came to meet uh, Peter Mack. Then he got to a stage we were meeting uh, uh, the SHS. So the system was updating itself. But our leaders failed to update themselves. It got to a point then DHS or whatever uh, wasn't again, so we moved to uh, BCD. And then it updated itself to DVD. So now, um, the leaders were in charge of the When we come to movie making, like the three ones, uh, the people that were taken in charge was the marketers. We, the producers, we, we weren't having enough money to push it to where it's supposed to be today. So our marketers had the big opportunity because they had the money. But then they 
they, they didn't think about tomorrow. They didn't think about, okay, what if tomorrow our industry is no more uh, accepting what we have today? What will happen? They didn't think about all this. And then we're enjoying the little knowledge, the little money they had. So today, all this is passing on. Um, um, Let the... Benjilo, let me cut in briefly. Okay. All of us heard the noise about Black Panther and people call various yeah. African lands Wakanda and all that. The mm. United States is more advanced in terms of technology than we are. But then the box office runs into millions of dollars. How do they do it? Okay, when it comes to that, um, you see, uh, making a film, first of all here, we were very limited about our market. The, the only market we came to meet in the film industry were at Oprah Square after releasing your movie, you felt that you think you're done. So investing that is, had that still the amount of money into movies after releasing, man, there's no way you get your money. So we were only thinking about the market. You understand? So yeah. the market doesn't give you that huge amount of money in return. At the end of the day, you'll be forced to use um, uh, 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 a mini budget to shoot so that uh, in return you can get your money back. I hope you're, you're, you're getting my point. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Benjilo, thank you so much for making time to speak with us. You're welcome, sir. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Benjilo. You see. All right. Benjulo, Benjulo is lamenting the fact that the power was in the hands of marketers. And when we hear some of these movie actors complain about the nosedive in the industry, they say they were sabotaged by distributors. They were sabotaged by marketers. Was there no synergy and cohesion between the various parts that formed the collective of the industry? Ibad, uh, the second generation of Ghana film industry has a history which is bad. It started with bad blood between the government filmmakers and the independent filmmakers. So it, it was survivors of the fittest. Distributors assembled themselves and they were minding their business. As producers were minding their business. The one who has gone to school, who has been trained to manage the film industry, think they are not of importance to the development of the film industry. So he was also at the GFIC, Ghana Film Industry Corporation, minding his business, not thinking that the government could sell even where he's sitting. To the day that place was sold, sold out, and shut down. Mm. So now, the independent filmmakers who have no school, who have no idea about management of film industry, were left on the wilderness. Mm. So everybody bites somebody to survive. Mm. And this has been for the past 20 years. Mm. So when, in, at the time, money fell in the hands of the marketers and the distributors, Instead of buying movies from the producers, mm -hmm. the, the, the producer will have to go and do the duplication of the CDs and bring to them to sell and make the money before giving mm -hmm. the money back to the producers. Mm -hmm. So money was in, it, it, it was in the hand of the marketers who did not invest into the film. Mm -hmm. So you come and he tells you he has not sold. You go back. But he has sold. He's holding the money. Mm. So it went on for years. Mm. They became richer without investment. Mm. And the producer who invests became poorer, mm. not getting his money at hand. Mm. Then you go and say, okay, today they bought two. Collect it. So you have, let's say you spend $10,000 to shoot a film. Mm. And you go there and they give you 60 cents. 50 cents, 10 cents, one dollar out of your 10,000, you can never be a rich man. Yeah, 
So this became a culture. Hmm. So you produce your movie, you, you do your duplication, give it to the marketer to sell only the CDs, and he's, he's taking it on credit and determine when to give your money back to you. And he holds money that he never worked for. He sat in his shop, so did keep the money, and he is rich in his accounts. Then, at the time, they having the money, power, then they decided to produce now. A marketer tent producer. A, a marketer tent producer. And because they did not know how to produce, they took a dive from away from the style of doing a good movie to their own style of doing a, their movies. And that was how they cultivated the Cree movie, the Akam movie. Mm -hmm. So they won't shoot it in Accra. They will go to Kumasi, where there's no competition, where nobody will say anything, no matter how they do it, and started doing their thing. Then they will come and sell. So there was a competition now. They became the uh, uh, conflict of interest became the order of the day. He's supposed to sell movies only. Now he's producing. So if you go and shoot your movie and you bring for him to sell, he has his own movie too in the shop so he pack your movies at the back of the bucket and put his movies at the front there and keep selling and yours is not sold when you come he packs it the people don't like it take it wow so now it is the people like the tree film they don't like the english film so take your english film hmm. the people like the tree film they don't like the english film so take your english film hmm. so there's no distributor who sells english films so if there's going to be a selling of English film, then it is a Nigerian film. Wow. And there was Nigerian marketers too in the market, minding their business, mm. selling Nigerian films. So at what point did Adams, Apple, Shelley, Frimpong, Manso, how did, were they able to change the dynamics? Shelley came into the, into the picture did not change the dynamics. Shelley created a, an, a, an integrity for herself, but it did not affect the style of filmmaking in Ghana. How do, you, how do you mean? She came and her concentration was on her cinematography, the quality of her pictures above all other pictures. So everything you say about Shelley was do you see the pictures? Do you see the quality of her locations? Uh, Do you see her pictures? Did she produce picture perfect? Perfect picture. Perfect picture. Okay, so it was all about the pictures. So they invested in more sophisticated cameras so, yeah, and nothing so else. So Shelly will import lens from abroad to shoot and finish and take it back to DHL to get her picture. So everything about Shelly was cinematography. Mm -hmm. So the beauty, the aesthetic of film made Shirley an iconic filmmaker. Mm, mm, but mm, mm. In, the, in, the, in the subconscious of the traditional, then now traditional filmmakers in Ghana, Shirley was seen to be like, he's from the elite people. Mm. So she was not embraced such so that even we want to learn from her beautiful cinematographic style. So it did not affect... So she appealed to a certain class, an elitist class. Uh, so anything And the Buga Buga people down there didn't embrace her. So we did, uh, the, she was not appreciated by this side. So she was on her own, hmm. but she brought the movie for the distributors to distribute. And they did? And they did. Because the distributor is different from the producer. They want the money. And she went through the same caliber of style at the time she stopped it because then she was going to drown. So if there was that disconnect, you called it bad blood within the value chain, production up to marketing and distribution. At what time did movie premiering, Silver Bird, at what time did they become so fanciful? No, movie premiering has been from the beginning of fame in Ghana. The first generation, they were showing movies at the cinemas because we had cinemas all over the place. But when the cinemas were shut down, the video center, uh, the, the second generation with the video film came 
and they started no, no, but when when i don't know whether paul g when they produced that magana they didn't premiere they just dumped it onto the market that's what i'm saying i'm giving you the history of seeing uh, the Premier. premiering it is not yeah the, the question and and forgive me if i'm being ignorant since the producers and directors had no faith in the marketers they would rather make noise about premiering they premiere it two or three times and make money or break even and forget marketing or distribution currently that is what is becoming uh -huh. so that's what i'm saying i'm asking you that. yeah th that's what is becoming because you don't want somebody to hold your movie invest so much and you can't see your movie you must do the traditional film business the traditional film business across the world is production distribution exhibition production distribution exhibition the exhibition is what we call box office so in the absence of cinema theaters in the country mm. you don't have exhibition so silverbed is a nigerian company as i'm talking to you from 2010 up to now nigeria didn't have cinemas like us 2010 up to now nigerian changed their style of filmmaking so they have the what we all do then they have the cinema film though they are shooting on digital cameras but they call it cinema film because the standard of the picture the cinematography is of high pedigree a bit closer to soliloid the standard of the locations and the story making is of high pedigree such that it meets the cinematic standard and the cinema the cinema theaters are of itself a quality control outfit because before your movie can be shown at a particular cinema you must meet the sound quality the sound format the picture format you the video format you must meet all the st st uh, the status tree and your story itself should be cinema worthy so it then uh, imposes a demand on the producer and the director to do a work that befits cinema exhibition uh, our time our time is barely up but i want to ask you pinpointed questions and kindly make your answers brief is there disunity amongst actors in ghana disunity all the associations have the politics in-house like mpp has these factions you know ndc have their factions all the associations to the the moment there's a politics there's a political outfit or element in a particular grouping that somebody must be elected before he can lead the grouping it is bound to have a team that must contend each other for one to lead the association richard this is what is going on in all the associations richard mr beautiful and Njako were doing superb Ejako campaigned for one party, Mr. Beautiful campaigned for another. We, the audience, we've lost the charm and idea of having these two great actors in one film. Partisanship, apart from your local politics within the industry, how much of a problem has partisanship been to the growth of the movie industry? With Mr. Beautiful case, it's, un it's quite unfortunate. We don't have to adopt that, but it happened. So he was isolated from Kumawood. Uh, like, like I'm saying, it is quite unfortunate. He, he was working for the Ashanti region filmmakers. And you know by default in this country, when you talk about political colors, we know dominantly which political color is known to be for the Ashantis and known to be for the Elwes. So if and he's a fanti man, and he he, he fantis are not doing film. He's working for Kumawood. All the producers that produce him are not from Western Region or Central Region. He every work he does, it is in Kumawood. So these producers, you know how Ghana politics is. They take it personal. So he's producing you, and you are you are on the campaign platform for that party. 
he's not going to work with you again. Even landladies and landlords uh, evacuate, uh, evacuate or evict, evict, evict uh, people. Uh, uh, tenants because they belong, to, they are supporting wow. a particular party. So the same, I'll call it with more no disrespect, the same immaturity of our political lifestyle. It's into um, that. My time is up. Um, is there any insurance package for actors or a stable top payment? You act two or three scenes, we are paying you X amount of money. If you fall sick or when anything happens to you, there is no one you can turn to. Is that the situation within the industry? Yeah, because there's no law. So nobody's obliged to do So you anything. don't pay taxes? You pay tax per the, your, the places you acquire services. Like you, the hotel you book, you pay the tax to book the hotel to shoot your film. You pay tax for renting the camera to shoot the film. You pay tax for the things. But I mean, you, don't you pay SNIT so that when you are old and frail, there will be something little for you to keep your head above water. It is many, recent. It is many recent access. That SNIT, I'm told we are told to die poor. It is recent that SNIT has developed something for private sector. Before it is SNIT was technically for people working on a salary base. No, but you are, you are the president of the Ghana you know, Film Directors Guild. Do you know a um, taxi driver, the fat guy? I don't know. I've forgotten yeah. his name. Uh, Titi. Uh, Titi. 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 Is, yeah, Titi is facing challenges. And those were the people, uh, many other people. So would you want them to die poor? Can't you come up with a scheme so that they can put away maybe 10% of what you give them per production so they can fall back on that when they are no longer gracing the big screen? You see, this is, this is uh, the work of the Actors Guild to design a scheme for their members. Or all the associations, of course, need to design a scheme for members long uh, old age. You know, our, our industry doesn't have aspiration or retirement. Okay. So you don't know even when you will leave the industry. Because you, you can't stop working until you are dead, physically dead. As an actor, at every time in your life. Do you know where Abrobe is? Abrobe of Cantata? You, know, you can't trace some of this. Uh, Richie, thank you so much. We've gone way above our time. I've been in the studios with Mr. Richard Iaubuaten, uh, National President of Film Directors Guild of Ghana, also Secretary General of Film Federation of Ghana and Chairman of National Committee for Ghana 60 Years Film Summit. Sir, thank you so much for making time. Thank you so much. All too soon, we've come to the end of yet again another edition of Time with Irbad Ibrahim. So we come your way tomorrow at exactly 8 p.m. Take care and keep praying for Madagana. Good night.